if you will, the highest court possible. And that's the throne room of God. And he goes before the sure enough uh, chief justice. And uh, Psalm 26, beginning in verse 1, it says, Judge me, O Lord, for I have walked in my integrity. I have trusted also in the Lord, therefore shall I shall not slide. Examine me, O Lord, and prove me to try my reins and my heart. For thy loving kindness is before my eye, mine eyes, and I have walked in thy truth. I have not sat with vain persons, neither will I go in with dissemblers. I have hated the congregation of the evildoers, and will not sit with the wicked. I will wash my hands in innocent, innocency, so will I compass thine altar, O Lord that I may publish with the voice of thanksgiving and tell of all thy wondrous works. Lord, I have loved the habitation of thy house and the place where thine honor dwells. Gather not my soul with sinners, nor my life with bloody men, in whose hands is mischief, and their right hand is full of bribes. But as for me, I will walk in mine integrity. Redeem me and be merciful unto me. My foot standeth in an even place in the congregation. Will I bless thee, Lord? May God bless this psalm to our hearts tonight. So we see here that, like I say, David is trying to clear his name. He's, he's, he's seeking some sort of vindication for something that he's been accused of. And so we see in the first three verses here, uh, his examination. He's being examined if you will and you know with any case there needs to be an examination there needs to be uh facts that are set out uh you know there need if there's accusations there needs to be supporting facts and we'll see here in a little bit that maybe this is not so but rather than waiting on the order of the court he automatically turns to the chief counsel if you will the almighty god and ask him he says scrutinize me do you see anything in me? Uh, you know, he, he asked for scrutiny. And, you know, he is confident that his walk of integrity that he is possessing at this particular time is enough to get him uh, a not guilty, if you will. You know, and ain't that a good testimony? If I had a testimony good enough to where my walk with God was good enough that no matter what somebody said about me, that... You know, I would be vindicated from it. I couldn't be accused of it. You know, all because we boldly say that, uh, you know, um, maybe we're falsely accused, but my walk with God shows that I'm not guilty. And, sure. you know, that's quite a testimony, if you will. And then if we look at verses 4 through 8. Um, he puts up his defense, if you will. We see his defense. Uh, this psalm... Like I say, it doesn't really give record of the accusations. It doesn't say anything about what he's being accused of. The only thing we see here in this psalm is someone or some bunch is spreading lies about David. They have falsely accused him of something. And as I said, he's using his testimony kind of as a, a backdrop to uh, prove his, in, it, his innocence. You know, he says he specifically avoids certain people. Turn over, if you will, to the 101st Psalm. And this is a list of things that he doesn't partake in or people that he doesn't uh, necessarily uh, deal with or hang out with. You know, he's, he's careful about hypocritical or evil friendships, uh, if you will. 101st Psalm, he says... I will sing of mercy and judgment unto thee, O Lord, will I sing. I will behave myself wisely in a perfect way. O when wilt thou come unto me? I will walk within my house with a perfect heart. I will set no wicked thing before my eyes. I hate the work of them that turn aside and shall not cleave to me. A forward heart shall depart from me, and I will not know a wicked person. Whoso privily slandereth his neighbor, him will I cut off. Him that hath a high look and a proud heart, will, I, will not I suffer. Mine eyes shall be upon the faithful of the land, that they may dwell with me. 
He that walketh in a perfect way, he shall serve me. He that worketh deceit shall not dwell in my house. He that telleth lies shall not tarry in my sight. Finally, in verse 8, I will early destroy all the wicked of the land, that I may cut off all wicked doers from the city of the Lord. So he's still using his good testimony that he has. He's, he's using his walk that he has with the Lord. And, you know, he specifically addresses avoiding uh, hypocrit hypocritical type uh, people or anything like that. And he goes on record of saying that he's washing his hands of this, that he's innocent. And here's the big thing. He's not seeking retaliation or anything against the people who are accusing him. You know, we, <laughs> you know, somebody accuses me of something, I'm going to be on them. You know, hey, you know, we need to square this up right now. Well, we see here, David, you know, he's not doing anything. He's not retaliating. He's using what he has done in his walk as his defense. Once again, you know, man, you know, that's a marvelous testimony. You know, he affirms his private and public love and commitment to the Lord's house. What do God's people do when they get puffed up and somebody accuses them of something? What's the first thing they neglect? The church. <laughs> neglect the church and the fellowship of God's people, don't they? You know, that's the first thing we do. And that's totally, that's 180 degrees from what we really should be doing, sure. you know. You know, we need to be in the Lord's house. We need to be worshiping the Lord. We need to be in fellowship with saints. You know, we need to get this stuff squared away. You know, and we need to be in fellowship with one another. But he remains faithful to the Lord's house. He remains grateful to the Lord. He's still praising the Lord. And, you know, through all that. And he's exalting God and he's seeking. This is, this is the, the thing about it. He's seeking God's powerful presence in his life. You know, he's not neglecting that. And then the last part of this psalm, verses 9 through 12, we see his closing argument. You know, he's, he's arguing his case here, if you will. Uh, you know, he appeals to the justice of the highest court. Uh, he gives testimony that he hasn't partnered with those who are evil. You know, he shows... Uh, Clearly that he cannot be accused alongside other evildoers, that he has, uh, you know, he has separated himself from them. And the thing of it is, he's not bragging about it. He's not boasting about it. It's not some kind of a prideful manner with him. It's really like it's something uh, second nature, if you will. You know, he's, he's not speaking out in pride. He's dependent on the grace and the mercy of, of God. Is what he's doing, basically. And, uh, you know, and the justice that will be delivered to him from that. So, you know, this psalm beginning in verse 1, you know, it begins with confidence in his walk. He said, Judge me, O Lord, for I have walked in mine integrity. And then he goes on to say, I have trusted also in the Lord, therefore I shall not slide. His footing has not slipped. He has not backslidden. Or anything like that, you know. He's still, uh, he's not stumbled. And he's ready to give faithfulness, uh, if you will, witness to the faith, faithfulness of God in his promises. He's really, uh, really uh, able to give that witness to that. You know, there's going to be times when we're going to find ourselves falsely accused. There's going to be times when we find ourselves that we're going to be misjudged. And, you know, rather than frustrating ourselves, trying to defend ourselves against something like that, and then maybe even later having to repent for something we've done, in, in trying to defend ourselves, kind of like David's testimony, our walk ought to be good enough defense against a false accusation like that. You know, it ought to be something that, that is very prevalent in our life. You know, I think David is a pretty good example, you know, that he has set for us here. Go before the chief justice in the supreme, supreme, supreme court. You know, uh, that's, uh, that's what we need to do. Let him, let him rule on our case. 
because you know no matter what the circumstances are you know uh, we can find comfort in knowing that our just simply our walking in integrity is a good enough defense for us and anytime that there's a false accusation or anything that comes before us that our walk is so good that our personal relationship with God is so good that that is a good enough defense anybody have anything to add to that you know the devil comes against us and our you know he comes before us and takes yeah. care of us as Jesus he intercedes for us and that's that's how you get through it yeah you know as scripture bears that out he's our chief accuser you know hey I'm sure he's before the throne every day look what that Norton dude's doing <laughs> <laughs> yeah well he's he's under the blood yeah, thank, God. thank the Lord yes Anything else? Any prayer requests or anything on Facebook? Anybody send anything no, in? No, so far. Okay. Everybody's happy. <laughs> That's what we like to hear. <laughs> yeah, we're, well, we're almost happy. <laughs> we're about as happy as, happy as Baptists get. <laughs> All right, well, I don't have anything else, and if nobody else has anything else, I uh, look forward to being with everybody Sunday morning in the Lord's house for worship. Mm -hmm. And like I say, praise the Lord on the good news from Joel. Yes. God's still in the healing business. Yes, right. Well, if not, if we'll stand, we will.